Hello and welcome to an episode of Conversations. These conversations are recordings where we give a snapshot glimpse of what we are learning together as we study God's Word here at Eastgate Baptist Church. And my name is Jerome Taylor. I happen to serve as the pastor here at Eastgate Baptist Church. I count that as a privilege to be able to share each week uh, not only the messages that we are learning from Scripture, but to shepherd over this congregation. And we believe that God is doing exciting things here at Eastgate Baptist Church, and we invite you to come take a look at what God is doing if you're in the Flint area. Uh, we would love to invite you over to our campus and see what's going on. Please be sure to check us out at one of our worship gatherings at 11 o'clock. You can certainly find more information by surfing around on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you may have found this video, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, our faith, our website at eastgatebaptist.org. But let's dive into where we are. It is the Christmas season. We've kind of talked about that last week. And uh, all things Christmas are going on. The music, the, the outfits, the parties. I mean, the whole shebang is going on. And so in the middle of that, uh, we've talked about how it is easy to get lost in all the minutia the incredible miracle that is there in the Christmas story. Last week, we shared about uh, the, the miraculous moment and how everything God was doing was orchestrating this miraculous moment and bringing forth his son, uh, this miraculous one, this, this Jesus, who is fully God, fully man. We, the Bible calls him uh, the word that became flesh, the, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the wonderful counselor. This is all found in the son that was promised, the one that the angels proclaimed peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And as we think about that message, not only is the, the miracle of the moment uh, miraculous. Not only is that that significance of how God orchestrated all of that together to bring about this culminating moment of providing His Son through this gift, this this Christ Child, this this one we ser we celebrate at Christmas. It's not only a miraculous moment, but it's also a miraculous message, and uh, a message that is miraculous in what it provides for us. A message that's miraculous in how it transforms us. A, a, a message that's miraculous because it it moves us to sharing with others who Jesus is, and perhaps no other uh, simplified set of scripture comes to us about this this miraculous message. Than, about Jesus, anyways, uh, than the words from Jesus himself to a man named Nicodemus. And, and you find these in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. And, and these are very famous, famous words, especially in the, uh, the, Christian, uh, the Christian pockets of America. Whenever you hear this verse, it, it's pretty familiar. It comes from John 3, verses 16 and following, where Jesus told Nicodemus, that God loved the world in this way. He gave his only one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only son of God. So wrapping this up, if I'm going to give a recap of why the message itself is so miraculous. Uh, this baby who would become, grow and, and become this, this man who uh, in all of his life was sinless, perfect, holy, also was very expressive. He, he communicated about who God is, what God has done, what God has said, and what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God. And here... He delivers a very simple but yet potent glimpse of how miraculous this message is. I mean, think about it. What would it take for a message to be miraculous? A message that you just absolutely would not want to miss out on. A message that that is life-altering. A message that you can't help but want to share with someone else because it has changed you so much. What would that message be comprised of? And here we see a few uh, reasons why this message is so absolutely miraculous, why it does the work it's able to do 
in our lives when we find out about who God is, what God has done, and what God says, and what that means for our lives, how it changes everything. I mean, that's what a miracle is. A miracle is something that extraordinary, out of the ordinary, that transforms the the um, the the um, current situation uh, of the moment. And so this message is is miraculous because one, it is so clear. It is so clear. Nicodemus is a religious figure. He has all the right degrees and pedigrees and background and everything that you could ask for. And he is longing for clarity, one, about who Jesus is. What is the reason you are here? There had been all kinds of theories about who the Messiah would be. And when Jesus rolled up on the scene, if you will, when God orchestrated this perfect moment, people were... Uh, wanting to know more about who he was. So Nicodemus goes at night to see Jesus, to find out some clarity about who he is and about what God was doing through him. And Jesus clearly articulates one powerful message. God has not abandoned his people. God has not abandoned the world. God cares about the world. He was clearly illuminating that fact. And in doing so, he was saying that God not only cares, God loves. God loves the world in this way that he gave. He, he not only speaks words, he demonstrates that through action. He puts into play uh, what he intended from the foundation of the world to redeem the world. God demonstrates his love in this way that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the message is, first of all, clearly articulating and, and miraculous because it lets us hone in on the fact that God cares for us, that God exists and God cares. But God not only cares, God is compassionate, compassionate in a way that it's more than just words. But it's not only clear and compassionate, it's also concise. The message about all of this, about everything with Jesus, comes down to this. God loves us. He gave his one and only son, his compassion, so that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Everyone who believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. It is concise in that manner of powerful truth. That message conveyed that is absolutely miraculous. God wants us to clearly know who he is. God wants us to know the compassion he has for us. And God wants to know us to know how concise and simple it is. It is life-changing and it requires repentance, turning away from the old way of life and following after him. That song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, is a repentance song. That because of the gospel, because of God being clear about who he is, his compassion and love towards me, and the concise potency of the gospel, I repent and turn away from my sins and follow after him. But it's not only concise, and, and that is the simple faith that is there. A faith that changes everything, as simple as it is, it changes everything. But it's also convicting. Because it lets us know that this is absolutely extraordinary, miraculous news. A message to us. Because aside from that news, we already are convicted. We are already condemned in our sin. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not one purchase is righteous. No, not one. And the message that is so miraculous is that God clearly wanting us to know us and compassionately declaring his love towards us in a concise way that, that is meant to save us. He also shows us what we are being saved from. That's the grandeur of this good news. It lets us know how extraordinarily good it is in saving us from the bad news. Um, you know, it, I've heard it said that sometimes before people can get saved, they first got to understand that they're lost. Um, they got to understand what it means to be condemned. That our sin is what is that is that which separates us from God. Um, sometimes it's hard to understand that. Sometimes it's hard to grasp hold of that, that we are sinners in need of a Savior, that we are 
we are people drowning in a sea of lostness and we need someone to rescue us. It's hard for us to really imagine that. But this is what the Bible communicates, that everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is why we need repentance. This is why we need a redeemer. Someone that in our repentance we can actually turn to. It would make no difference if we just said, oh, well, I, I, this is not the right way. I got to figure out the right way and have not a right way. No, it's good news that says, hey, this is the condemnation that is on the world because of their sin. They're already condemnation. And yet God clearly wanting us to know him, compassionately showing his love, concisely saying this is the beauty of the gospel in turning to me. He also says, hey, I, 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 sh I know what you are being redeemed from. And I'm willing to rescue you from your utter sinfulness and to bring you into my incomplete holiness. And that is why this message is so miraculous. One, it gives us clarity from God about who he is and what he desires. It shows us his compassion. It is concise in what it set, shares with us about how to believe and what faith is. It is convicting because it lets us know what we are redeemed from. But it is also compelling because such miraculous news, such love is what is to draw us. When we look at the manger, we're meant to look forward to the cross and see the Christ who was born that holy night going on that holy Sunday to, to I mean, that, that good Friday to die for us and then be risen again on that first holy Sunday of, of Easter. And it's meant to compel us. The Holy Spirit using this message that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, the message of Christ, that, that faith come, is birthed and compelled by this message to which we draw near in repentance and belief, turning to the Son of God, seeking his salvation, which he freely gives, and living from that moment on in light of the gospel, the miraculous message that saves. This is the message of Christmas. This is the message that we want to convey as a church. This is a, the only message that can save mankind, and we want to share with the world. And we hope that if you are a believer, you are compelled to share that clear, compassionate, concise, convicting, compelling message of Christ at Christmas, of Christ who saves, of Christ who loves. We want to share that with you, and I hope it's been uh, a way to look at the message and see how indeed miraculous it is, and be re to remember the beauty of this gift we call Christmas time because of Christ who came. Until next time, this has been an episode of Conversations. Hope you find out more information about us. And like I said, if you're in the Flint, Michigan area and you do not have a home church, please come check us out over here on the east side of Flint uh, on Atherton Road uh, in Burton. Until next time, God bless you. And may you be challenged and encouraged as you seek to follow Jesus. God bless.